All right. Barakallahu feek. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, dear participants, it's great to uh, to see your names, at least. I don't see your faces, uh, but it's great to have you here. Uh, as just has been stated by uh, Brother Hassan, this is, uh, I mean, a Ramadan special. Each, uh, every year we uh, we provide free life classes in collaboration with the Ta'if Digital Institute to ensure that you have the zakat essentials, inshallah. Um, we will uh, we will start directly, bi'idnillah. But we, before we start, I uh, uh, I want to set the stage, um, and I want to set set the stage in the following way. You know, this session is is not just a normal session; it's a spiritual session, inshallah. It's ibadah. We are engaged with one of the pillars, the great, uh, magnificent pillars of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, we are on a daily basis. We are working on our second pillar. And alhamdulillah, as of yesterday and for some countries, as of today, we are working on our fourth pillar. And today we will have our full focus on this third pillar in between, inshallah, bi'inillah. So please, I don't know what you are doing, but set aside everything. Like whenever you pray your salah, you set aside all the worldly things. Set aside everything right now, the, the preparing of the food or, uh, or, or other things with regards to the children. Put them together and let's watch together, inshallah, this session and, uh, and enjoy. Um, and also set aside what you already know. And let's build our knowledge together in building blocks. So in a structured manner, bi'inillah. And if there are any questions, please ask them in the Q&A section. Uh, and in the end, we will we'll discuss them, inshallah. I will take 30 to 40 minutes. And afterwards, we will allocate a lot of time to your, uh, to your questions. And... If you feel like ashamed or whatever, there is no reason. But if you uh, uh, if you don't feel comfortable by sharing it in the Q and A section, you can do it in the chat section, and you can send it directly to Brother Hassan, or you can send it directly to me, Inshallah. Uh, so we will ensure, be that all the questions are asked. There is no need to be ashamed or uh, or whatever, uh, because we are right now in working for him and uh, investigating in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us because it's all about subservience during the month of Ramadan. And when it comes to the third pillar, there is also subservience with regards to his third pillar. Uh, so please, please feel free. Bi'idnillah. This inshallah will be the first, uh, my session will be the first out of three sessions. Uh, so I will start today bi'idnillah, with regards to the introduction of zakat. So it, it has more spiritual uh, angle. Uh, the second session will be given by uh, Mufti Faraz Adam. Um, he will be focusing on the technicalities with regards to zakat calculation. Okay, Yaimad, you've told me everything with regards to the spiritual perspective and the spiritual angle with regards to the zakat. And I feel entirely empowered. Alhamdulillah, make it concrete for me. I will not make it concrete for you today. Uh, Mufti Faraz will do that with regards to the zakat calculation, how to calculate the zakat, the specific assets. It will be quite technical, but in an understandable way. Um, the last session, when you have calculated your zakat, it should be distributed and there should be some sort of impact measurement. This will be given by uh, Ridwan Youssef. Ridwan Youssef is the director of services within the National Zakat Foundation in the UK. Uh, so this, uh, this is the... Uh, the three uh, three classes inshallah in the coming the coming weeks so uh, you'll be prepared in two weeks inshallah you'll become uh, an expert in this field of in love for your own family so i have as i've said like the general outline we have set the stage uh, please i mean uh, renew your in intentions and let's be like with our full attention uh, in for the coming 30 minutes, 35 minutes. I will not make it too long, inshallah, but please give me your attention, um, and if there is any sincere feedback, please share it. I will start with the gen 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 uh, general philosophy of zakat, and then I will jump to the objectives of zakat, uh, and then we will uh, jump to our uh, Q&A section, bi'idnillah. Who am I? I think that's the, uh, I mean, the less interesting part of this uh, entire conversation. But my name is Imad Al Fadili, and you can just call me Imad. But in the I'm the executive director of the National Zakat Foundation in the Netherlands. We, uh, the National Zakat Foundation, uh, has different entities, independent local entities across the world. 
uh, in the U United Kingdom, in Australia, in Canada, in Switzerland, and in the Netherlands. Uh, we are in our local uh, countries, uh, we are the National Zakat Foundation. And, and besides of that, we also advise governmental and international NGOs on their Zakat practices. So United Nations programs and go on. Uh, but in the last, so if you want to liaise with regards to that afterwards, you can have my contact details and reach out. So what is my mantra? What is my, my way of living for the coming period with you, like this entire journey? Let's focus on our third pillar. And normally I say, let's focus on our, thir on our third pillar and jump then to our fourth pillar uh, when this session is held before Ramadan. But right now we've started with Ramadan across the world, alhamdulillah. Uh, I would say focus, let's focus on our third pillar and connect it to our fourth pillar, the idnillah. Uh, so this, this will be uh, my way of uh, my narrative, inshallah, in the coming session and also the narrative of the um, of Mufti Faraz, Adam, and Ridwan Yusuf in the coming two sessions, bi idnillah. So let's start, bismillah, bismillah, rahman, rahim. The general philosophy. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the third pillar of Islam, right? Uh, but before I start, uh, because I don't see any faces, I want to get some input from your side, because otherwise I will have like a lecture of 35 minutes to 40 minutes and you will say, hey, to your husband or to your wife, hey, it was a great session and then you forgot everything in its entirety. I want to have some contribution from your side. So what I will share with you that right now, if you can go, you can see it on my, uh, you can see it right now. If you can go to www.menti.com, and use this specific code, this question will pop up. And this question is, Zakat, what comes to your mind? I'm really curious what comes to your mind. I will copy this link, inshallah, and I will put it in the chat section. Um, please go to it. Uh, and please leave, leave, leave for me some, some input. It's really helpful for the coming session. So uh, uh, at least I have some uh, some interaction while uh, while I'm still not seeing you, but like on uh, on the screen I can uh, I can have some contribution based on that I can build. So if you go to www.menti.com and use this specific code, this question will pop up. You have three three things that you uh, can uh, uh, can put over there. Uh, you can write down one thing or two things or three things, and it will pop up over here in this word cloud. Inshallah. So I see like there are two people active, uh, but there are plenty of people, participants over here. Uh, so please uh, go directly to this website. I've just put it over there. And I will give you one minute, uh, not for too long. Okay, things are going well. Okay, best wealth transfer system. Ibadah, compulsory, doing good, charity, social empowerment, it's the right of the poor, you're giving. Any other things? Please, I give you, I'll literally give you one minute. So I'll be starting to, uh, to count right now. Okay, purification, doing justice. I think you can see the word cloud right now, right? So. Uh, um, it's good to have this as a, as a start, giving, doing good, it's building one ummah, sharing the wealth, purification of the soul and wealth. Okay, barakallahu Thank you a lot. Uh, religious obligation, purification, purification, fight income inequality, circulation, cleansing, support. Okay, alhamdulillah. Barakallahu fikum. It's compulsory aspect of religion. I see also a lot in the in the chat. Uh, let me continue then. I will come back to this. So if you fill it out in the mean in the mean uh, meantime, that would be great. Um, alhamdulillah, I see a lot of people still uh, still filling out things. Please do, uh, and I will come back to it at the end. And probably I will ask the the same question again. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that exercise, inshallah. Let me make a picture out of it right now. Uh, yes. So as I've, as I've said, um, sorry for the intermezzo, it's the third pillar of Islam, right? So everybody knows that it's the third pillar of Islam, and we're talking about clarification, purification, circulation, uh, and go on. I want to go one step deeper, inshallah. The Prophet Muhammad, 
he stated that Islam, Islam is a state of subservience and it's built on five distinctive pillars. The testifying that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of God. The shahada, ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. The second one, maintaining salah, giving the zakah, fasting in Ramadan and pilgrimage to the house for those who are able to find a way. So what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is saying over here, Islam is a building with a foundation of five pillars. So in order to have Islam to flourish, in order to have a flourishing Islam, those five pillars should be set in place. You cannot abandon one of the five pillars. You need all of them because Islam is built on these five pillars. Islam is built on these five pillars. If we want to have a flourishing Islam, these five pillars should, should adhere to the, the rules and the regulations with regards to this and also, I mean, to the spiritual objectives in order for Islam to thrive. And if we, if we go, if we think about uh, the third pillar of Islam, subhanAllah, um, you know, we tend to, to approach it in an emotional way, right? Uh, it's my money. Uh, I give out money. I give out, we also tend to use this word charity. I give out my charity. I want to decide where it goes because I know what the best destination is of the charity, which is my money, right? In an entire emotional way, uh, you, you see certain pictures or videos or whatever, it touches your heart and it goes over there, right? Well, when we go back to the pillar of zakat, subhanAllah, you know, it's a pillar which is set out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a meticulous way, in a precise way. Because look at the Quran, for example, with regards to the recipients. In Surah At-Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 60, lil fuqara wal masakin wal amilin alayha wal mu'allafati qulubuhum wa fi riqabi wal gharimina wa fi sabilillahi wa bin sabil. There are eight type of categories of recipients of zakat. It has been defined in a precise way in, in the Quran. Um, it's, it's a pillar, actually. If we look at it, it's a pillar which Allah didn't give us much leeway to interpret it by, uh, by ourselves. Like we got like the entire framework. We got it. We got it as a template from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no need for scholars or for us to think a lot about it. It's already predefined. Subhanallah. Think. Think about it. Why? Why would it be? Are people, are we weak for, for wealth and money? Is that potentially the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been defined in such a detailed way? And zakat is therefore also a pillar like all the others. It's a rational pillar. It's a pillar that needs not only this, but first of all, it needs this. It needs our rational. It needs a rational approach. And then the spiritual boost will follow. You know, and the example that I often make is, the analogy that I often make is the analogy with Salah and also the analogy with Ramadan, you know. Uh, with regards to Salah, when we go to, back to Salah, we look at Salah. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I sp I'm speaking on behalf of myself, right? I mean, in, in all honesty, uh, most of the times you don't feel anything uh, because it's, you just push it bet between all your appointments and, and go on while it should be the other way around. Uh, like it's just, it's just a checkbox, like, like a tick box exercise. Yeah. But me not feeling the entire khushua during the salah is not a reason to do salah in a different way. To do one time aerobics and the other time Pilates and the other time another exercise. No, we have a certain framework, a certain way of praying. Just do it and you will feel it and train yourselves. And the same analogy can also be made with regards to Ramadan, while, why the rational approach is so important. If we look at Ramadan, we started like for us in, uh, in Europe, it's the second day. And I think for some countries, it's the first day. It's not that when I wake up, I look at my app and look at the weather. And if the weather is well, I say, hey, skip Ramadan. I will not, uh, I will not fast today. Uh, let's try tomorrow again. 
or when it's too cold or when it's too hot or when I feel thirsty, I just say, hey, stop, man. I don't have, uh, or there is a party somewhere. I, I just want to go over there because they potentially have a great lunch. So let's skip Ramadan this time. And I will, no, you approach it in a rational way, right? Because there is a certain framework, a certain supreme framework from our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so the coming few minutes, inshallah, uh, I will also approach the pillar of zakat from a rational way, a rational approach. And my narrative is always just do it and you will feel it. Like we've started with the Ramadan, uh, we, we pray our salah, we do it in the way that has been prescribed for us and the way how it has been done by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and has been taught to us. And afterwards, we, you will feel it. So there is no much difference with regards to zakat. So for zakat, there is no need to search for the, the project that appeals your heart or that has the best marketing budget or whatever. No, no, no. It needs a rational approach. Look at it from a rational approach. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask from me? How should I calculate the zakat? Which assets are these? Yeah? So it's not, I think that I should pay zakat on these assets. No, no, no. Go back. It has already been prescribed, as I say, in a meticulous way. And just do it, and then you will feel it, inshallah. I hope there is nobody from Nike uh, and, and, uh, and, and file a suit against me uh, with regards to the copyright. Uh, so let's, let's go to the second part, inshallah. Because there is also something, Allah, subhanAllah, something phenomenal with regards to the pillar of zakat. Because when you look at the pillar of zakat, in the Quran, it has been 28 times mentioned together with Salah. Zakat has been 28 times mentioned together with Salah in the Quran. And what can we extract from this? You know, if we go back to the to Salah, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us, Miftahul uh, Jannati as Salah, wa Miftahu Salatu al Wudu. The 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 key to Jannah. The key to Jannah is the Salah. And the key to Salah is Al-Wudu, our ablution. And this specific key to Jannah, Miftah al-Jannah, al-Salah, has been linked 28 times with the Zakah in the Quran. And we can see that in, 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 in numerous ways. For example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاءَ وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاءَ وَأَقْرِضُوا اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا And we can see this 28 times. 28 times these two words mentioned uh, after one another. What can we learn from this? The key to paradise is salah. And look, zakat is directly followed. We can see over here a horizontal and vertical relationship. The horizontal and the vertical relationship. The vertical relationship is the relationship between us and our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Between his servant and him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The horizontal relationship is a relationship with, his, with the other fellow creations. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاءُ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاءُ Invest in our relationship. Invest in our vertical relationship. Once this has been done, go out, go out and connect your horizontal relationship. Connect with my fellow creations. Go over there, work, create communities, establish societies, find the value in each other. You know, being together is inherent to Islam. And we can see this also in another way. If we look at ascetism in Islam, ascetism, a monk, being a monk and just praying and not really uh, adding any value to the community, uh, only investing in your vertical relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a noble thing, right? MashaAllah, you know, engaging in ibadah 24-7, right? And you would say these people, they cannot work, right? We should sustain them from the pot of zakat, right? But if you look at the scholars, they, uh, they are not of this view. And the analogy can also be made with regards to Surah Al-Jumu'ah. In Surah Al-Jumu'ah, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعَدْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ فَإِذَا قُدِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَبَتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ When a prayer, and when a prayer has been concluded, disperse within the land of Allah and seek the bounty from Allah and remember Allah often so you may succeed. So investing in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not enough. You should also invest in your horizontal relationship. Because I see here a lot of participants. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I can't mention, I don't know all the names, but I see Marianne Muhammad, I see Muhammad Ali, I see Mumudu. I don't know you. But you have certain specific, unique characteristics and competencies. My life would never be complete if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't exist. You should add value. You should provide your competency, your thinking, your uh, God, godly giving gifts to the world, to the Muslims. Because then only we will have a complete puzzle. We will have a complete life. We need everybody. You don't know me. You don't know my colleagues. But you need my colleagues. You need the competencies of my people over here. The Dutchies, we in the Netherlands, we need the people in Rwanda. And we need the Muslims who live in, in Bangladesh or in Pakistan. We need their competencies. If they wouldn't um, work on their potential, my life wouldn't be complete. Our life wouldn't be complete. So this is the horizontal relationship. It's something deeper. You know, like it's something deeper. I mean, I'm, pro I'm providing you different angles and different ways to look at the pillar of zakat. And with the relationship with regards to salah, once when you pray, you know, when you pray with, let me let me take it. Later today, if you start with your with your sajada, your prayer mat, and you pray, once you finalize your prayer, you start with your, your alkar. And then the second thinking would come: hey, alhamdulillah, I've invested in my vertical relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right now, I should invest in his fellow creations. I should go out. فَإِذَا قُدِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ If the salah has been concluded, go out. Go out and add value. And then I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to the second, the second point that you can see on the presentation. Zakat is a pillar that connects us. You know, zakat is a pillar that connects us. It, it connects us in, in its philosophy. The vertical relationship and the horizontal relationship. And zakat is also a unique pillar, a unique pillar, uh, which literally connects us. Because if you, uh, if you look at all the other pillars, if you look at the salah, if you look at the shahada, if you look at Ramadan, if you look at hajj, it can be all done individually. The only pillar where you need the other, is zakat you need the other you need the other to fulfill this pillar and i will repeat it you need the other to fulfill your pillar you need the other to fulfill your islam you need you need this person so it's so it should also shape your way of thinking you should be, feel, be feeling dignified. You should be feeling humble. Subhanallah, I need the other. How should I approach the other? How can I assess the other? What can I do for you? You know, I'm at your service and not the other way around. Not I have money and I will assist you and I will give you and I will do this and I decide which and I, no, no, no. What do you need? How can I assist? How can I be of value? Tell me. And how can I do this in a sustainable way? I'll come back to this, inshallah. So as I said, zakat is like all the other pillars. And it requires a rational approach. Just do it, inshallah. And you will literally feel it. You will feel yourself being purified. You will feel yourself being elevated. Uh, you will feel the barakah in your life. You know? uh, it's not an either-or approach. The emotion, the emotion follows often the rational. 
ان شاء الله and when we come back you know like uh because i've i've just made this point zakat connects us it's a pillar where we need the other and you know it's a pillar which is uh which builds the foundations of islam which builds this entire building so islam islam is a religion of sharing and togetherness we are the biggest philanthropists muslims are the biggest philanthropists you are the biggest philanthropist you know this this feeling should be you should be absorbing this internally islam is a religion of sharing and it's not only by talking no it's in our core in the core of islam in the third pillar uh, a pillar which cannot be fulfilled without the other islam is a religion of sharing and togetherness and as i've just said all pillars can be executed individually except zakat yeah except zakat but muslims are encouraged to execute the pillars together and let me give you different examples if we look at the salah you know you can find i mean you can do your salah in a corner somewhere at home uh completely alone and it will be accepted by allah but it's better to pray together because then the clan comes together the club you know the club islam the muslims because we are part of club paradise right we are part of club the club islam and we have one objective and that's going together to paradise and get a, a lot of people with us to go on this journey we don't have any benefit by not people entering paradise we want to go to the, together and this is the this is the club this is the club islam and we have our clubhouse this clubhouse is called mosque yeah and we come together over there because we enjoy praying together and it's better to pray together i mean we can only see this with regards to the hasanat that you get when when you pray together and we also come together on friday with the club we come on friday and we get a pitch in order to motivate each other and go again for one week strive strive for the best invest in the vertical relationship and the horizontal relationship again islam is a religion of sharing sharing is in our islamic dna it's in our islamic dna but also if you look at 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 uh at ramadan you know you can completely i mean you can fast uh, on your own and we have been doing this for the last two years with regards to uh the corona the pandemic situation alhamdulillah but being together and giving others uh to break their fast is better and you can also see this from the words of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna ahabba at-ta'ami ila allah ma kathurat alayhi al-aydi the most beloved the most beloved food to allah is the food that pass that passes the most hands yeah that is shared yeah uh and also we 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 are recommended to uh to to um uh, to go to give food to people to break their fast with whether they are rich or poor right i mean i can remember these days in uh, in mecca you would you would like just 10 minutes 15 minutes before maghrib uh you would go outside and everybody is was running towards you everybody was running towards you and one was asking you please whenever you break your fast drink this milk the other one please drink this mazamzam the other one please please start with this date the other one gives you a certain bread and a certain point in time i thought subhanallah you know these are the best entrepreneurs these are the best entrepreneurs like 15 minutes before maghrib starts they are entrepreneuring and then i started to copy paste the uh, the, the business model and uh, i was i was starting to do exactly the same but i wasn't that that well and that salesy uh, and i i repeat these words i wasn't that well in it and i wasn't that that salesy and at the same time like i feel some pain whenever uh, uh sharing these uh, these words with you uh, whenever you give something you should be humbled when the counterparty accepts it because you you can ask people to do whatever or give people whatever but they can decide to not accept it at all and that's also the, the approach from us 
with regards to zakat. Whenever we give zakat, we should be truly humble when a counterparty wants to accept our zakat, wants to distribute our zakat in an efficient and transformative way. Yeah, it's clearly something to ponder on. But if we go back to Islam is a religion of sharing and togetherness, and sharing is in our Islamic DNA. Also, if we look at Hajj, you, you can do the Hajj alone. We can stand alone on Arafah. But it's great when you are over there and there are many, many people, million, millions of people, sometimes 2 million, 2.5 million of people. And you can just tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, brother, sister, please keep me your prayers. Again, Islam is a religion of sharing, togetherness. So please look from that perspective to zakat. Zakat is about bringing communities together and strengthen each other and the values of Islam. Because we are so happy with our club. We are so happy with our club Islam. We want this club to become bigger. We want people to align with these Islamic values in order to go hand by hand, like towards the paradise. I mean, towards, towards the final destination where we are heading to, Idnillah. So, if I come back, what is the overall purpose of zakat? The overall purpose of zakat, Imam Tabarani, he was summarizing this in such a great way. The overall purpose of zakat is strengthening Muslims sustainably and strengthening Islam and its values. That's the purpose of zakat. The purpose of zakat is not how much food packs have I distributed. The, the overall purpose of zakat is not creating foundations with millions of millions just by having millions. No, it's about strengthening Muslims and strengthening Islam. And I will repeat, repeat this. The overall purpose of zakat is not to give you a good feeling. No, no, no. The overall purpose is strengthen Muslims, your fellow Muslims. Give them their dignity and give them their Islam back. Because when we have strong Muslims, we will have a strong Islam. So it has a strategic objective. It's strategic giving. Zakat is strategic giving. With sadaqah, you can do whatever you want. You can please your feeling or you can do whatever. But zakat has a certain strategy, has a strategic objective. We have to reach something when we fulfill our pillar of zakat. By praying salah, there is a certain strategy behind it. It's a certain tarbiyah. It's a certain way of educating people um, to be disciplined. There are different values that get along with the pillar of salah. And the same also with the pillar of, of Ramadan, right? Fasting, a taqwa. We, 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 we are working on our taqwa. So it all has a certain strategic objective. And the overall purpose of zakat is strengthening Muslims and strengthening Islam and its values. So as I've said, Zakat has an entire framework, including the calculation principles. What is zakatable? What is not zakatable? And go on. But this part would, would, will only come to life and really matter to you when you understand the spiritual objectives and what it really means, what it really means to pay zakat. Because all the others, all the other principles will be easy then for you because it just comes to subservience. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requiring for me? What has the Prophet Muhammad sallam has taught us? And we will just execute that. Yeah. For us, we, we get a game plan, and the only thing for us is to follow the commands. So, as I've said, an entire framework, calculation principles, but also management principles. How should be zakat, how should it be managed? Uh, distribution principles. Who can receive zakat under which conditions? Uh, how should the screening be? And go on. Therefore, zakat should be considered as all the other pillars by adhering to the supreme and superior framework. By executing, executing it properly, uh, it will affect, inshallah, your spiritual status. And if I, if I go the last five to ten minutes, like, what are the objectives of zakat when distributing and overall? Like, zakat has always been centralized. From uh, the, type, the time of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, zakat has always been centralized. 
it was always one institution and it has also been uh, localized, it was al always for the local society, the local country where you live. Um, and it has a balanced distributional approach. Zakat is there not only for the poor, yeah? Zakat has eight types of, of categories uh, of recipients. So it should be distributed across these eight, eight recipients. And as I've said, going back, the overall purpose of zakat is strengthening Muslims and strengthening Islam. Yeah, getting rid of poverty is one of the, one of the ways to, to reach that. Uh, um, uh, but there is much more than that. As I've said, there are eight types of, of categories. But let's reflect. Let's first reflect on the first one, centralized. You know, as I've said, Islam is about, Islam is a religion of sharin. Sharin is in our Islamic DNA. Coming together is in our Islamic DNA. So zakat being centralized in an institution is not an insane, insane thought for us. It's logic because it's unity. We are coming together at one place. Yeah. And we are pulling our funds because what we can do, we can, what we can uh, reach individually, uh, we cannot reach that. We can reach much more when pulling our funds and coming together uh, and localize. I mean, if you were looking to the, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and also after his death, when Umar radiallahu anhu, he became the caliph, uh, he would send Mu'adi bin Jabal to Yemen. Yemen, the country that we know uh, nowadays with, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, with, with its poor situation, with the war, our brothers and sisters over there, the dire poverty. Mu'adi bin Jabal was sent to Yemen. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he gave him one task and he said, Yeah, Mu'ad, go over there and collect the zakat from their eligible payers and transfer it in a sustainable way, but transfer it to their eligible recipients. And then after one year, Mu'ad ibn Jabal uh, came back to Yem came back to Medina, where Umar radiallahu anhu was headquartered. And he came back with the third of zakat, the third of all the zakat in Yemen. And as we know, Umar radiallahu anhu, he had a certain attitude, alhamdulillah. And his message was, Ya Mu'ad, I only gave you one job, you know, collect and distribute the zakat locally. And then Mu'ad ibn Jabal said, you know, everybody has been transformed. This is what is still available. And I brought it back to Medina. The second year, Mu'ad ibn Jabal came with 50% of all the zakat in Yemen. Again, to, to Medina, to Umar, and Umar Allah had the same conversation again. You know, why? I only gave you one job. You only had one task. Just fulfill it. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal, radiallahu anhu, he said, I fulfilled my job. This is what has been left after transforming the people. And in the third year, he came back with 100% of all the zakat of Yemen. So it was always centralized in an institution. In this was, was, uh, was the governor, Mu'ad, and localized localized in Yemen, localized to empower your local community. You know, we should look at our local community, empower our local community, and then we can go to other communities because then we are this strong club, right? This strong club where nobody falls, falls apart and now nobody falls out. And also distributed and transforming it in a sustainable way. So Zakat is not only there for food packs, it's there for food packs, for education, for and like we should ensure that whenever someone knocks on the door who needs assistance, that this per specific person uh, trans transforms to the zakat payer. As, uh, as Umar and who would say, uh, make a mustahiq, a needy, a muzaki, a payer. And that's the transformative impact and the effect and the rational approach that we need with zakat. Yeah, and if we look at the overall, like if we look at the eight categories, like the eight categories of zakat, how can you like summarize these eight categories under, uh, under like a, a, a narrative or a story that I can share, inshallah, with my uh, with my family? Uh, I would assist you with this with the following analogy. You know, zakat, the the way of uh, distributing. It's it's done in three ways. 
first of all, we start with poverty alleviation and afterwards empowerment. And after that, community development. And the analogy that I like to make always is the analogy of the, the birds that are flying, you know, the birds that are flying. So when a bird comes to earth, he's exhausted, we should give him or her a bit of water. Please drink a bit of water, small little bird. Once they are resting and they are relaxed, we should hold their hands and help them and teach them again how to fly. Because birds are born to fly, right? They are shaped, they are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with certain competencies, with a, with a unique potential, which is flying. And for every person on this globe, on this earth, it's something unique. As I've said in the beginning, if you wouldn't fulfill your potential, my life would never be complete. If I don't fulfill my potential, if my people over here don't fulfill that potential, your life would never be complete. Even if you are living in Pakistan or Bangladesh or Canada or Rwanda or South Africa or whatever, or in somewhere in, uh, in, in Southeast Asia, everybody should fulfill his potential. Then we can live, live a complete life. So we should assist people in this. And also these birds, they are born to fly. So we should hold their hands and empower them, empower them to fly again, to reach their potential. And once all these birds, all these people, all these fellow Muslims are flying, we should ensure and avoid that there are no accidents. And then everybody is going towards the same direction, community development. So when you summar summarize the distribution of zakat, it all comes to these three. Alleviate poverty, empower, and develop the community. Because the overall purpose is to strengthen Muslims and to strengthen Islam. And uh, I think I, uh, I will end it here, inshallah. Uh, not before I share Allah's story, inshallah, with you. Uh, no, I, was, I was reading a book, uh, and it was a book of, uh, of uh, Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi, uh, a famous scholar. And uh, I have the book in front of me. And I was, I was reading such a phenomenal story. The story of... Uh, Amr bin Abdullah bin Zubair. You know, Amr bin Abdullah bin Zubair, whenever he would give zakat to people, he would only give it to them when they were in sujood. Allahu Akbar. He had to pay zakat, and he would only give it to people when they were in sujood. And he would put it in their shoes. You know when we go to the mosque, you put your shoes somewhere? Just figure, just imagine, you come out, and someone has just put over there some some gold or thousands of dollars for you. Just imagine, because these are these were the amounts what we were talking about eh, previously, because these were millionaires and billionaires. Just imagine what kind of feeling would you get? And you're already like in a dire, hard situation, but you have you haven't shared it with anyone. But there is someone who is looking at you. Of course, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this horizontal relationship is so strong that people, whenever they look at you, they see, hey, this guy is stressed or this lady is stressed. They must go through a hard situation. But let me not, not ask anything. Let me not ask like this entire story and make it juicy, et cetera, et cetera. No, no, let me be there for these people. And let me not give them the feeling of being poor. So Amr bin Abdullah bin Zubair, he would give zakat to people when they were in sujood and put it in their shoes. And then... Um, one of the people would ask him uh, who was helping him to do this he said why are you doing this Ya Amr bin Abdullah bin Zubair he said I don't want anyone to feel poor you know it's a two way relationship I'm humbled if the other party accepts it we need each other I need the other and the only thing what I want to do when fulfilling my third pillar is to strengthen Muslims and Islam, not, not to please my feeling, not to get their dignity away. No, no, no. A dignified way of giving. It's a dignified way of giving. And the last note that I will uh, end, at, end with, inshallah, my dear uh, colleague who is the, uh, the chief executive of the National Zakat Foundation in the United Kingdom, 
during during like a few weeks ago he was making in his reflections on isra wal mi'raj he was making such a phenomenal statement and uh, i've decided to share this statement also with you you know isra wal mi'raj when the prophet muhammad sallallahu he ascended uh, uh, to the heavens uh, and where, where, where salah had, had been prescribed for us the prophet muhammad sallallahu he was so close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know you would say this is the culmination point right it ends with that because all of us we want to see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to be with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his messenger he would say like the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi was there and then the story ends there right I would my story to, to end there. When I'm with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to stay there. I don't want to come back. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi he was pushed back. He had to go back to earth. He had to come back to us. Why? Because our time over here, our minutes over here on this earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all about building communities. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was sent back to build communities, to continue building, and to teach people how to build communities. And we have been taught this in different ways. And one of the instruments that we got in order to build these communities in a sustainable way is the pillar of zakat. So I hope, inshallah, I hope you've enjoyed this session. Uh, I hope I have uh, I've provided you different angles with regards to how to approach the pillar of zakat from a spiritual objective, how to look at it, bi'idnillah. The coming weeks, inshallah, uh, you will have Mufti Faraz Adam. He is working currently with National Zakat Foundation Worldwide. He's a Sharia advisor. Uh, he, uh, he will share with you all the ins and outs and the technicalities, bi'idnillah. And the week and the session afterwards, inshallah, will be with regards to zakat distribution and impact measurement by the director of services, of my colleague of uh, Redwan Yusuf of National Zakat Foundation in the UK. You know, look, I, I, I have over here a picture of, of coffee, but I know no, none of us can drink coffee except if you are somewhere in Southeast Asia right now. Uh, but now I want to learn from you, inshallah, without, without any coffee for, uh, for the people who are not breaking their, uh, their fast. Uh, my, my presentation ends here. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam and brother Imad. Jazakallah khairan for insightful and spiritual session. Uh, I believe everybody's uh, heart is being uplifted and motivated. Uh, the purpose of your time spent being here uh, must have been served. There are questions uh, I would ask. The people who are listening, if you have any questions, please feel free to type your question in Q&A or uh, perhaps if you want to speak live with Mr. Ahmad, uh, you can raise hand and you will be unmuted and be able to speak to me. Yeah, I'm, I will be waiting for you then, uh, Brother Hassan. And uh, I, in the mean, well, so I will... With regards to this recording will be shared, yes, this recording will be available. Uh, I know I received a message from, uh, I think, Malaysia that they are having iftar at the moment. Yes, it will be available as well. Uh, we need WhatsApp group for more explanation of Zakat. Uh, I would say... Uh, you can watch, you can continue with us for the next two sessions and I believe you will be able to understand and your, all your answers, questions will be answered. Inshallah. Uh, if anybody wants to ask question, I can unmute you uh, with regards to chat. Is there any question? All right, uh, Brother Emma, there are questions. How can we build National Zagat Foundation in prospective counties? Yeah, I think countries. What I will do, I will just share with, uh, I will just share uh, uh, the email, inshallah. I mean, you can just uh, uh, reach out, inshallah. Uh, let me let me just do this. I will, because I, uh, we are always uh, assisting also other countries to establish national zakat foundations with regards to the frameworks and go on. Uh, I've just shared my email. So uh, All right, everybody, uh, the email has been shared in the chat. You can take the email and contact National Zakat Foundation directly. 
Uh, next question here is with regards to why the concept of zakat comes in Ramadan? Why not in other times? Yeah, phenomenal question. Phenomenal question. Uh, Barakallahu Fik for uh, asking this question. Uh, uh, you know, it also amazes me uh, sometimes uh, a way you can see globally with regards to the you know, we, we're talking about zakat, it's a lot of money. We're talking about hundreds of billions a year that is that has been paid uh, towards zakat every year. So what I say, you are one of the biggest philanthropists. We are the biggest philanthropists as Muslims. Uh, why Ramadan? Yeah, also, if we look at the global data, we see that 80% of the zakat is distributed during Ramadan. And I think... Uh, I don't. I, I'm. I'm still. I'm still searching for the for the for uh, for uh, for the answer. Uh, but as you can see, also in the Western continent, the pillar of zakat gets much much attention uh, during Ramadan. While it's not a Ramadan thing, you know, it's a hawl thing. And this will be something that will be discussed coming uh, coming week, inshallah, with Mufti Faraz. You know, the phenomenal thing with regards to the pillar of zakat, it's that it's not linked to a certain specific time or period you know like many christians they uh they, the way of giving is mostly linked to certain parties uh, like christmas so like christmas is busy season for most uh, christian organization christian relief organizations and also easter for us muslims we don't have this and that's phenomenal because pover like poverty alleviation empowerment and community development it's not work that only needs to be done during Christmas or during Easter, right? It's work that needs to be done each and every day, which needs funds each and every day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he prescribed zakat for the one who reaches the nisab. Nisab is, is a threshold. When you surpass this threshold, which is 85 gram of gold or 595 grams of silver, but it will be, the technicalities will come, inshallah, coming uh, coming week. Uh, one person might pass this threshold on the first of Muharram, the other one on the first of Rajab, the other one on the 10th of Ramadan, the other one in uh, Sha'ban somewhere. You know, like everybody has his own specific date. And one year after, you pay zakat, which results that Muslims pay, every Muslim pays zakat on unique times, which is good with regards to the wider agenda of poverty alleviation of uh, empowerment and community development. You know, like these these Muslims who are poor, uh, they they don't don't only need assistance only during Ramadan, but they need it across the year. Uh, so um, it's not an Islamic thing. Uh, it's not a thing that has a Sharia base, uh, uh, like doing everything in Ramadan. What you what you would see with the Sahaba is that they would give a lot of uh, 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 their zakat in Sha'ban to prepare people who need it during Ramadan. And we definitely also have like certain hadith by uh, when giving during the, the month of Ramadan, uh, I mean, there are more blessings in it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it's still linked to your uh, nisab, to the nisab and, and the hawl. But this will be, inshallah, technicality, which will be discussed the, the coming week. But I, uh, I really liked your question, Barak Lawfik. I will just continue, uh, Brother Ahsan. What cri criteria is used in determining who to re receive zakat? This will be discussed, inshallah, during the session of zakat distribution. So there is a godly uh, framework where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has imposed a certain criteria. Um, so it's actually a game plan and uh, it needs some local tweak. But this will be something that will be discussed, inshallah. The coming uh, sessions, the session of Ridwan, uh, Salam, thank you so much. Um, I didn't quite understand the Sahabi who went back to Umar and with up to the zakat and the third time he returned. Does this mean no one was in it? Yeah. So when we, uh, Marian Muhammad, Barakallahu when we go back to the story of uh, that I've just shared with you, so Umar and Mu'ad ibn Jabal, when he was sending him to Yemen as a governor, and when he came back with the third of all the zakat in the first year and, and half the second year and with 100% in the third year, it means he has been distributing zakat in a transformative way. He really transform, uh, transformed the societies. He came up with sustainable solutions. There was no zakat needed anymore. Yemen was rich at that time. Um, we can also see this in the history. So yeah, that was that was the uh, the core of, uh, uh, of the story. Uh, 
that whenever you adhere to the strategic agenda, the strategic objectives, and approach it in a rational way, uh, you will see that we, because we got these instruments from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we can achieve its potential and we can get rid of um, the challenges. Uh, one of them is, for example, getting rid of poverty and uh, empowering the society. Uh, just to get it asked, a reward of the Virgin Mother, the Muslim ladies in Ramadan. Yeah, Barakallahu Fiqh, Imran Qadr, I've just shared as zakat. You can uh, pay your zakat in Ramadan, uh, and most of the Muslims also do that. Uh, um, before uh, before their zakat anniversary date, but you will, will come back inshallah to the technicalities. It's still needed when your zakat anniversary date pops up that you calculate your zakat at that time to ensure that you haven't uh, given too less during Ramadan. But this will be inshallah something for. Uh, um, is that email? Is the email correct or is there a, a typo? Info and national zakat for small emails, correct? People give out more zakat than Ramadan because there's more reward. Yeah, zakat should be implemented by force by government, especially in Muslim. Like other. Thank you, Mr. Okay, I think uh, that's it. I think there are two particip participants who raised their hand. Uh, Brother Ahsan, if you can take up these two and then we will finalize, inshallah, because it's one o'clock and uh, I think uh, plenty of people they need to, uh, to go on with their uh, preparations during uh, Ramadan. Bismillah. Brother Brahim, are allowed to speak? <clears throat> Can you hear me better, right? Okay, allow to. Okay. Uh, as alaikum, Abdullahi, you can speak, brother. Uh, Abdullahi, you are on mute, you can speak. Okay, moving forward, uh, Brother Kazim Tanis. Okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Please, can you hear me? Thank you. We really appreciate your presentation. Jazakum Allah khairan. Uh, may Allah bestow you more with knowledge. Uh, my question is that, is there any certification for the participant of this program? after the completion of the, the entire program. And is there any other programs that will be introduced like a webinar like this, like Sharia compliance program for the Sharia team working in the bank and other things? I think that's my question regarding that. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Right. Sure, Brother Abdullahi, there, are, uh, there is a certificate for all the participants who are joining us today and on the next few sessions. And Taif is keep on conducting uh, sessions for the people who are interested in learning Islamic finance. So Brother Kasim Lamisa, you can speak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. My question is, thanks for the insight and the angle you take us to through the through the through the session. What I'm want, I want to ask is that uh, what is the National Sakat Foundation is doing concerning African continent? Do you have any Sakat Foundation, National Sakat Foundation there in, in Africa? The National Sakat Foundation. Do you get my question? Uh, if you can repeat the question in one sentence, inshallah. I say what you have and NZF in Africa continent, National Foundation, National Sakat Foundation. Do you have it here in Africa? Do you have it in every? Is it across Africa? Okay, Do you understand me? Yeah, I get, I get your question. Baraklovic, uh, Baraklovic Khazim. Uh, yeah, as I've said, National Sakat Foundation is not active in Africa so far. Uh, we've been conducting some assignments, but we, uh, we, we are headquartered. We have a. Uh, we have one in, in the United Kingdom, in the Netherlands, in Canada, in Switzerland, in, in the Netherlands and some other countries upcoming, uh, but we are not active in Africa. Um, and our model of the National Zakat Foundation is to establish National Zakat Foundations, I mean, independent entities, uh, because you are the expert uh, of your uh, locality and your local society. Uh, 
and keep the zakat and local. So uh, probably this will be a second question. We also don't have distributions cross border. Uh, so in the Netherlands, the zakat stays in the Netherlands. In Switzerland, it stays in Switzerland. In in all these countries, it stays like in that way. We don't we don't have any operations in Africa. If that was a question, but Glovik. Brother Bashir, Omar. Brother Bashir, Omar, uh, you are on mute. You can ask question if you want. Uh, Brother Abu Bakr, if you want to ask question, then we will be closing the session after this, inshallah. Inshallah. Yes, his name is Magai Abu Bakr, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, Magai Abu Bakr. All right. Um, okay. No problem, Mr. Ahmad. Inshallah. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ahmad, once again for your time and presence, uh, for enlightening us with the with the uh, vision and then the, the spirituality of zakat uh, that is connected to it. And I believe moving forward, uh, whoever have joined the session will continue to join the session, uh, inshallah, understanding more about Zagab and uh, learning, um, inshallah, with NZF and Taif together. Inshallah, as, as you asked, no, these two are unmuted, so I mean, they can still ask. <laughs> A magazine from Nigeria. Bismillah. Uh, the question that I want to ask is uh, we need to have a uh, WhatsApp group uh, for the world uh, uh, Zakat consignments so we can be able to put our uh, elders and our leaders uh, into the system. Because uh, in Nigeria we have lack of zakat givers, so if we get that, uh, maybe the classes uh, would be very close to our people. Inshallah. Inshallah. I believe, uh, Mr. Ahmad, they can go to NZF uh, website and they can see a lot of information over there. Exactly, and they can. Uh, exactly. Okay. Yeah, instead of because WhatsApp group is rather limited, you can follow uh, NZF on different networks. You can follow Mr. Ayman or Mufti Faraz uh, if you want to learn more about Zakat or Islamic finance, and uh, you can follow Taif as well. Inshallah. 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 Bar Bar Before ending the session, Mr. Ayman, I will ask you to just make a short dua for everybody to have a blessed Ramadan and uh, continue the prosperous month, Inshallah, with all the blessings of Allah. Inshallah, barakallahu fikum for your attendance. May Allah, may Allah uh, elevate us in Allah. May Allah shower us with the, all His blessings and uh, keep us steadfast during this Ramadan. And um, I would not be imad if I wouldn't uh, end it in a zakat way. Um, as we know, with our third pillar, um, I need you. You need me in order to fulfill this third pillar. We need each other. Let's keep each other, inshallah, in, in our prayers uh, and ask for all the goodness, bi'idnillah, and for us to really live up to our potential, bi'idnillah. And uh, we, we haven't seen each other by face. Um, I've only seen the names. You've seen me and my name. Uh, but hopefully we will, uh, we will hold hands, bi'idnillah, when, uh, when we walk into towards the Jannat al-Firdaus, bi'idnillah. And I will end with that note. Subhanallah wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam